See, that's a man that lives life on the edge. No layer mask, just the razor tool, one and done, no messing about. By insanely popular demands, here I present to you Phase Honor. If you're not familiar, he is one of currently one of the most popular Photoshop artists on planet Earth. He's got one of the fastest growing Photoshop YouTube channels I've ever seen, and he's also a fellow Brit. Now, the reason why I was excited about doing the Phase Runner reaction vid is because this guy does all of the art styles that I really cannot do or choose not to. He's brilliant at neon and holographic scenes as well as some really fantastic environmental pieces so today's quest i will be watching a couple of his main neon pieces on the channel trying to steal and glean some of the best ideas for my own work and then sharing those tips with you guys watching today if that sounds like a good time to you guys let's crack on First off, out the gate, I see he's using the brush tool set to normal and he's creating the atmospheric haze and fog. I'm trying to grab a look at the brush settings there to see if he's using flow or opacity to control. So I think I just saw a quick snippet there. Opacity 46%, flow 100%. So a lot of the guys that I work with have been using flow for controlling the brush and it's quite interesting to see phase runner go for the opacity approach that's actually the way that i was doing it for years and years and years until the team got me on to using flow so that's pretty interesting to see his approach for um brush control so that was a really fast composite grabbing that figure now what helped him out was the figure was on a very uniform clean background he was using Excellent sharp professional stock photography there. If you guys want to get better, then using high quality, the best quality stock photos you can find will really take your work to the next level. Free deviant art stock images, pixels, that will only get you so far. Oh, I'm interested to know where he grabbed that sword from. That looks pretty nifty. You can see by the pixel information, it's not as sharp as the samurai girl, if I've got that right. If she is a samurai, I'm not too sure. Um, I don't want to be culturally insensitive, but I, I can see from the pixel data that that isn't as sharp as that image there. But the thing is, it's a secondary element. So once he's done the processing and the lighting over the top of that, it will be barely noticeable. For the main figurative element, then yeah, you have to be a little bit more discerning. I've been asking Redowan for ages to do a dedicated tutorial on those um, advanced warp functions. I know I get comments all the time with guys telling me how the warp tools work, but I, I want to see it demonstrated in a proper tutorial. Good old pencil, yep, that's where my heart lies. If you look at the layer stack to the right, you can see that he's using clipping masks to restrict those adjustments to the pixel data below. And it's a really fast and effective way to ensure that all the work that you're doing is only being applied to the regions that you want it to. To create a clipping mask, hold Alt and click between layers. Okay, so when he did that um, darkness on the foreground building, I'm wondering if he sampled a very dark, murky uh, blue or whether he just laid that down as pure black to do that instant lighting it's mad how fast these guys work it really is I, I don't know how they do it i'm such a slow artist i'm not a speed artist of course this is time lapse whoa he's just banging on these emitted kind of neon lights now if you look at the layer stack to the right you can see he's using hard light and hard light is basically soft light or overlay on steroids and it's brilliant for creating very rich colorful ambient lighting and you can see that in effect right there okay so we've got some light details here the mode is color dodge color dodge is kind of similar to screen in that it will show the lights and remove the darks there is some slight variation between them we've got some foreground oh instant rain one and done see i love that overlay he went for overlay because it was a more subtle light emitted from the sword as opposed to the um, powerful light being emitted by the i don't know the name of the hat but the traditional chinese hat and good old pencil my favorite being used to selectively remove parts of the um is, is it a rice hat guys let me know in the comments below i'm i'm sorry i'm 
being culturally insensitive and butchering the names of these items. See, they're the tools I want to learn. That's an idea. Using the freehand lasso and then transforming that selection as opposed to the entire thing. I know to a lot of you guys this will sound obvious, but this is really getting me thinking outside of the box for my own work. This is an area that I really want to develop and get better myself. One day, I might try one of these neon pieces, see how it goes. All of them were merged together as opposed to being put in a layer group. So Phase Runner definitely likes to live life on the edge. Just get it down, throw it down, having faith in his creative decisions. Yeah, they must, they must be using some kind of graphics tablet to lay down those um, kind of catch lights at the top edge of the clothing because the light is coming down from i'm just going to call it a rice hat um it's coming down from the rice hat and catching on the top hard edges of the fabric very simple um doesn't look great when you zoom in but when you're zoomed out and you're looking at the entire scene you have that overall impression and feeling of the artwork these colors and tones are so popular if you look at the biggest photo manipulation artists they do tend to favor the blues pinks neons and purples it is very pleasing it's um like a dreamlike ethereal ascetic yeah you can't argue with that that's as good as it gets really look look at these details here with the lights the ambient lights catching on there that's badass that's badass so we've bounced over to one of phase runners other neon pieces this one is currently the number one most viewed video on his channel it's actually an nft piece i have some controversial opinions on nfts so we won't go there today i'm here purely for the art I want to watch i want to learn and i want to steal as many ideas as possible for my own artwork it's really interesting to see him use lighting as a uh, light and blend mode as opposed to screen um, obviously in photoshop there's 365 ways to skin the proverbial cat but i always like to see when people do things a little bit different you've got lighten you've got color dodge and you've got screen and i'm sure with a composite like this with so many different um, neon and colorful elements those layer blend modes will get used a lot for sure i love the way that so many of these glows are done manually as opposed to using like a, an outer glow or a filter blur gaussian blur there are many ways of creating those glowing effects and one of the main go-to's is to take the item, duplicate it, and then blur it. But what Phase One is doing here is he's just manually slapping down those emitted glowing light elements, and it's either a hard light or soft light or overlay or sometimes screen. And it's really interesting to see it uh, done like that. That's definitely a trick that I'll be stealing for my own workflow bit of frankenstein action going on there see that's a man that lives life on the edge no layer mask just the razor tool one and done no messing about you know what if i could have worked this fast when i was a professional book cover artist i would have definitely made like five times more money this new generation people like redouan christian bensalan the phase runner benny p they all just work so fast i'm um, compared to these guys i'm um, a little tortoise so slow man it's probably because i chose to be a pencil specialist that's what's holding me back now that's really interesting i'm seeing him use the adjustment layers really often for um so the color adjustment layers like color balance and hue saturation for controlling uh, the light and the color values of the light loads that's interesting to see you know what after i've done that Benny Productions reaction vid I started stealing his shadow technique all the time for my own work and it like instantly improved my shadows overnight um, if you're not familiar it's an exposure adjustment layer pull the kind of slider back to darken and then use the layer mask to selectively add or remove it goes both ways you can use it for shadows you can use it for highlights but for me in particular I, I really enjoyed using that process for creating uh, shadows, realistic looking shadows. So you look at that. He didn't use a, he didn't use a layer mask to blend that in. Um, that would be kind of traditional as it were. He grabbed the um, smudge tool and literally smudged the edge so it blended into the bottom without having to use a layer mask. 
really clever. We got some manual looking kind of catch light rim lights there. I'm, I've got to, yeah, you've got to be using a, a graphics tablet of some kind to create those catch lights for sure. Looks like an old Adobe logo that does. So that's the digital information within the umbrella. So you look, here's another example of grabbing a, a stock image and throwing it in. For anyone that's a beginner or a newbie, if you want to instantly improve your photo manipulation artwork, just use premium stocks, bite the bullet, get a, an Adobe stock subscription or one of the other platforms, and then enjoy life working with maximum resolution, high quality stock images. If you're really serious about this, particularly for a career, or you want to take your personal work to the next level, highly recommended. So if I have a call from the thumbnail, I think there is some rain that happens or occurs within this image. It would make sense, rain jacket and umbrella. But it's interesting how he used those elements to have the digital rain falling off the umbrella. That's pretty cool. Look at that, colour balance being used to control and create the, the ambient lighting on the bottom half of the figure. Anything fancy for the shadow? It's like a dark tone, manually painted, got the cap. See, that's what I need to learn, exactly that. Red around, where's our tutorial? I'm just gonna skip that back. I wanna see if you use the classic um, duplicate layer and then, and then filter Gaussian blur to create that emitted glow with that cat. So we've got the cat there. We've got a layer style, inner glow. And then outer glow. So both an inner glow and an outer glow to, to get that, that ethereal kind of digital retro holographic look. That cat's probably an advertisement, luring people into the shop. Really clever, digitized. We've got color dodge, we've got overlay, we've got line ear dodge, we've got screen, just manually slapping down those big, bold kind of light glows. Very fast, very fluid. This is a man who knows what he's doing. I'm just gonna stop that. I wanna know, right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and time this because I really wanted to see the uh, blur option used for creating that depth of field effect on the background. That really looks like something I wanna steal for my own artwork. So 0.25 speed, duplicates the layer, duplicate layer. So he's doing that blur, lens blur. Okay, that's cool. I've got that one saved. This is, I'm going to have a mess about with this because this will be ideal, especially for someone like me that's not good at backgrounds. If I could just lens blur that shiz, we're good to go. Now, the reason why he's used that layer mask, I'm guessing, to remove that bottom element is because imagine our scene is a camera. Because that foreground is closer to the lens, that would be um, sharper more saturated and it wouldn't be kind of blurred here so this figure the cat and this kind of vent is in focus and then anything behind that is out of focus so you can see the logic and the reason why the the lens blur layer was kind of painted out with a large soft edge brush brightness and contrast he uses that all the time so look, he's using the brightness and contrast adjustment layer to manually paint on those catch lights. So here you can see the, the cat is a very rich purpley tone and the color information of that cat will emit outwards. And I think that's what he was doing with that hue saturation adjustment layer. And then some manual kind of uh, purpley blue tones as I said before guys, I'm by no means an ex expert in neon and holographic artwork. That's just me guessing. A lot of this is me guessing. Hey, what's going on there? Is that is that the digital information bouncing off the umbrella? I like it when he goes manual. Bash. Look how fast that was. Oh, Redouan's good at that. And then what? Using the opacity. So as opposed to implementing the layer blend, blend mode, use the opacity to control the visibility of that um, smoke layer. What's the benefits of using color balance over selective color? Do you guys know? Give me a holler in the comments if you do. Got a skip in there for my American cousins. I know you guys call them dumpsters. 
Beavis and Butthead dumpster diving. That was a good episode. Shout out my Beavis and Butthead fam. I might do an artwork where I literally only use Phase Runner's techniques and try and botch my way through and create something. It'll be a really interesting experiment. What do you think about that one, guys? Should I give that a go? Somebody that's really not good at holographic and neon art trying to botch their way through and then, you know, it may inspire someone. If that guy Dean of uh, fightmanipulation.com can do it, then maybe anyone can do it. You know what? I've got to say it. I'm a new fan. I've always, I've, ever since the team showed me his artwork, I've been an admirer from afar. But like I said before, not really my bag up. I think there's a lot of this style. It doesn't really scream out to me like some other uh, niches or genres do. But in terms of just raw technical prowess, this is fantastic. I'm a convert. But as you can tell by my appearance and my crazy tattoos, I'm a little bit of a edgelord goth boy so i've never really been into what's popular but i love this i really enjoyed watching phase runner work on that i've got a couple of tips and tricks that i want to use in my own artwork i'm sure you guys picked up a few things too let me know in the comments below who you'd like to see me react to next i'm going to be working my way through the photoshop greats so hollow your comment in the comments below that will do it from me for this one guys Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you at the next one. See you then.